Diaz Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack addict, right? And we're going to get straight into the content of the day. But before we do, hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get it in, right? You already know what it is. Put the notification bell on all. So that way you're abreast of all the dope content I'm bringing all week long. And let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Because we got a whole lot to talk about. Um, you see that thumbnail right there. Pedophiles in prison. Cut and dry, man. It is what it is, right? It says it right there. Um, there's no justification for doing anything to kids. Okay, there's no uh, 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 rhyme or reason. There's no excuses. There's no, well, I couldn't help. No, you can help yourself, right? And if you can't help yourself, then maybe you don't need to be here. But um, what actually happens to these individuals? You know, these guys that catch these bad charges, um, that are just doing unsavory, insane things because it has to be some type of condition. It has to be something that's happened to them over a course of time or, or it just, you know, I can't key in on it because I'm not part of that life. But one thing I can say is it definitely has changed um, the way people look at other people nowadays. When you hear that word, you know, there's a lot of people that debate, you know, these people have problems. They have issues. We need to help them. Um, no. Okay. There is no helping the unhelpable. There is no helping people that can't help themselves. Any person, man, woman, um, that does anything to a child is not a man or a woman. Okay. That's just what it is. They are something totally different and something unexplainable. It's very unexplainable, but what happens to them while they were in prison or why they go to prison or what happens when they enter prison? Well, I can only speak from my experiences of what I've seen and what I've heard and what I know to be truth and facts, um, they don't last, okay? And the ones that do, it's not because they're placed on a general population yard where there's other people that are in for various other crimes. Um, they get placed in, and segregated into their own area, okay? A lot of them get placed on S and Y yards, sensitive needs yards, or protective custody units. Some of them go to even to the PH, PHU, which is the protective housing unit, um, because their crimes are just a little too outlandish, just so heinous. Uh, but what would happen, you know, if a pedophile actually went to a general population yard? He's gone already, right? It's not going to last very long. And I'm going to tell you why it's not going to last very long. Upon entering any yard, any prison that you go to, and I'm speaking in California terms, I'm speaking on California prison system, um, not other states, because I don't know how they wiggle. But... If you get to a California prison yard and you have bad charges and bad charges, meaning, you know, uh, uh, pedophile acts, chomo acts, things that you've done to children that you shouldn't have done, but you did anyways. Right. Um, and you'll notice that most of these characters are easily identifiable by the way they act, their mannerisms, um, staring off into space, playing Dungeons and Dragons, just some weird stuff that they do. Right. Um, that pretty much everybody knows about. Everybody in prison is on the lookout for a victim. Everybody in prison is on the lookout for someone that can come up off of or someone that has done something bad so they can either manipulate, extort, make them pay rent, take what they got, or beat them up or end their life. So if a pedophile pulls up to a prison, every prison yard you go to, you're going to have to go through reception, right? Then after going through reception, you're going to have to hit R&R. R&R is receiving. Okay, that's when you first get to a prison, they put you in a little cage, sit your ass down, and they let you know what unit you're going to, what building you're going to, what cell you're going to, and they kind of get the rundown of where you've been, your C file, they need to know everywhere you've been, if you're active, if you're general population, if you're S and Y, if you have sensitive needs, um, everything's going to be in a file. That file travels with you. If that file was not there, you would pl be placed in administrative segregation until that file catches up to you. And believe me, eventually it will catch up to you. That's the way a lot of these high profile gang members are able to wiggle and hit a yard for a minute because their C file doesn't quite catch up. When it does, they figure out that they're validated or they are who they are. And then they place them in administrative segregation pending transfer, or they put them on a different yard or keep them there depending upon, you know, their issues. If a pedophile gets to a yard, okay, let me, let me talk about man business. First of all, most of these correctional officers that are, that are there working these yards are men. Okay. You have women, you have men. And a lot of them think and have the same mentality as we do. You know, they're doing time as well. They might be fighting crime and they might be there to incarcerate people and to turn that key. 
But for the most part, they're men, just like anyone else. They have family, they have children, they have wives. Um, they don't like being around those type of people. I'm sorry to say, not a lot of people like to be around people that hurt children or manipulate them or do bad things. It's just the way of the world. It's just what it is, man. Um, I'm not going to justify them. I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to give it, make excuses. Pieces of shit is what is, that's it. It's just what it is, right? Um, a lot of these correction officers feel the exact same way. So when you get to a reception or you get to R and R, right? What's going to happen is a lot of people are going to figure out or find out who you are quick because the placas are going to let them know, Hey, Norteños just rolled up. They came from Salinas Valley. Hey, this white dude just rolled up. He came from high desert. Hey, you know, an Africano brother just rolled up from the Bay Area. They're going to let your people know. They're going to put word out there, you know, and if you have any bad charges or any smut or dirt on your name, they're going to let people know, especially if you're a pedophile. There's no way to scrape by, to, to get by and wiggle. It, it's just not happening, right? I've never seen it happen. You know, there's been cases where people that had rape charges, I guess, and things of that nature skate by for so many years because maybe it wasn't on their file. Or maybe somebody from the streets knew about it. Maybe he touched somebody's sister or whatever the case may be. And then the smut, the dirt comes out years later and he gets booked on the yard because that's what's going to happen, man. You're not going to walk any general population in the yard with any type of smut on your name, whether it be telling, whether it be uh, especially a pedophile, man, they're going to scrape those right from the gate. The telling part, man, they're going to give you the due course, due process, man, find out, make sure all the paperwork's in line. Everything is everything because you don't want to whack somebody because you think or because someone said or because of he said, she said or because of hearsay, because that's going to come back to you. If you make a bad call or you do something to the wrong person, man, they have family, they have homeboys. There's people in high places that are going to feel some certain type of way. When you're in charge of a yard, you're giving the keys, the yabes to that yard, or you're told to run that yard. You have to do that with an iron fist, but yet you have to do that with some type of compassion. You have to be able to, you know, decipher who is who and what is what and run it smooth. That's where a lot of wrecks happen is you, some people get placed in a position where they let the power go to their head, man, and they start making moves that they shouldn't make. And, you know, heads will roll eventually because you're never in a position where you're the ultimate authority, man. That's just not how prison works. There's always going to be someone above you um, calling cuetes. It's just what it is. Now, if you get there to a yard, man, and you're a pedophile, this is what's going to happen. Okay, I'm not trying to scare anyone. You know, if anything, man, you deserve everything you got coming. Okay, I'm not promoting violence. I'm not promoting altercations. I'm not promoting do this to somebody. What I'm saying is this is facts. This is what more than likely is going to happen to you. You know, for you weirdos that are watching that are like, oh, I need to find out because Gunner knows. No, Gunner don't know shit. What I do know is what I'm going to tell you, right? Um, if you get to a yard and you got pedophile charges, okay, what's going to happen is more than likely you getting to that yard, you've already PC'd up in reception. You already know and understand, but if you're a baboso and you haven't, and you just don't know it's your first time in prison, and you think everything's going to be cool and everything's going to be roses and fucking, and, and, and it's just going to be good for you, well, let me tell you how it's going to be hood for you, right? You're going to get there, and the black is going to read your file. He's going to see what you're in for, and immediately his eyebrows are going to raise, and he's going to let the powers that may be or the people that need to know exactly what you're in for. He's going to let people know exactly the type of characteristics you have, exactly what you're incarcerated for. Now, you can go to that yard and try to fucking speak for yourself and prove that you didn't do this or she was really 16, but I didn't know and this, whatever fucking you want to spin and spit to the people to think that they're going to suck it up with the super straw. You're mis in you're in you're greatly misinformed because that's what's not going to happen. You're not going to get a, a due process. You're not going to get a chance to speak your your beliefs and your on your behalf. You're not going to get, this ain't fucking court. I said, you're not a lawyer. You're not going to get to prison and say, but you don't understand. She was only, no, I, they don't care. Okay. By the time you get there, everyone on the yard within five to 10 minutes is going to know a weirdo just walked in the doors. Now, more than likely the, a lot of the cops, right? Have bleeding hearts. Not, a, not a lot of them, some of them. And they're going to let you know if you're a fucking idiot and you don't know, and you haven't already fucking went into protective custody and requested it, or they haven't placed you there just on their own. They're more than likely going to pull you to the side and whisper in your earlobe and let you know, hey, bitch, look, you got bad charges. You don't want to hit this yard. This is what's going to happen to you on said yard, right? 
And if you are stupid enough to say, you know what, it's cool, you know what I mean? She was 13, I'm fine, right? Okay, okay, you're fine, all right. They're going to place you in the most harshest environment that they can. They're going to put you with all the hitters and the lifers and the people that don't play that shit. Now, nobody in prison plays that. That's one of the unspoken rules. There's rules in prison, things you can and cannot do, things you can and cannot be in, incarcerated for. People you can talk to, people you can. I'm sorry, it's the politics of prison. It's just what it is. And if you're a pedophile, you're on the fucking bottom. You're the shit under the shit, okay? It's just what it is. Sorry, Spencer. It's how life is. Um, you're going to get there, and everyone's going to know what you're in for. When you get to the yard, when you get placed, you might be cool in your cell. If your cellie doesn't flight you right there, because let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to get in your cell. You're going to make your little fucking bed. Your cellie's immediately going to ask you for your paperwork. He's going to want to know what you're incarcerated for because he don't want to be in there with anyone bad, especially if he's functioning on a general population yard. He doesn't want to, you know, get his reputation and his fucking casa tainted by fucking mierda. He doesn't want to be in there with caca, straight up garbage. So what he's going to do is he's going to ask you for your paperwork, ask you for your charges. If you try to play the role like so many do, I don't want to talk about it, right? Well, then he's going to, you're going to fight about it because if a man asks, his, asks you to look at your paperwork, man, best believe that he's going to present his to you. He's going to trade off here. Here's mine. Let me look at yours, homie. That's usually how it's done. If any man in prison asks, especially someone of a different race, asks to see your paperwork and they don't exchange and hand you theirs at the same time, there's issues there. There's problems. That guy is not a convict. He doesn't know how the rules go. That motherfucker right there is probably in on the weirdest charges, weirder than your charges, and you're a weirdo anyway. So that's how it is. So usually he's going to trade off with you. You're going to tell him what you're in for. He's going to tell you what you're in for. He's going to breeze through it. Easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. You're going to breeze through his. And if it's love, it's sopa time. If not, it's pedazo time, right? If for some reason you got a weak celly, if for some reason you have a celly that's slacking in his Mac and is not doing what he has to do to protect his household, to protect his chante, his house, his fucking pad, his cell, then you're going to scrape by and make it to chow. If you make it to chow, people are already going to be looking at you because there's going to be those that know. And when the ones that know catch up to you, they're going to wait till you hit that yard. And as soon as you hit that yard, depending on the race that you are, because everything comes down to race. Sorry, that's just the way it is in California prisons, right? Everything is played by race. Your own people will handle you. If you're Mexican, the Mexicans going to do it. If you're white, well, guess what, brother? The woods are going to make their play. If you're a brother, well, then the brothers will do what the brothers do. You know what I mean? Hip-hop, hooray, ho, hey, you got to go, right? Everyone's going to take care of their business, especially on a pedophile. They're, no, they're not able to walk the yards, okay? That's what's going to happen in general population. More than likely, you're going to be stabbed repeatedly. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be maimed. You're going to be carried out of there. If for some reason they don't unalive you and you're able to get by again, you will be placed in administrative segregation pending transfer. Once you go to your ICC committee, they're going to realize that they fucked up. They put a fucking known pedophile on a yard and that's what happens. Some people are going to be sad for you and shed a tear. Some are going to laugh inside, right? Because they have children at home and they believe that you don't got nothing coming. That's the way of the world. That's how it works. Now, there are other yards and other places pedophiles can be placed. If you're placed in a protective housing unit, it's because you either requested it or they felt that your crimes were so crazy. And a lot of the people that get placed in protective housing units, it's because they burned all the bridges to every other S&Y yard or every other protective custody yard. They have nowhere to go. So they place them there or their crime was publicized. It's so crazy. Everybody knows about it. There's no way they could pl possibly place you without putting you in danger. And it's all about the safety and security of the prison. It's not about you. It's never about you. You are a number. You are nothing. You are fucking bubble gum on the bottom of a shoe. You are just there. If you, perhaps if something happens to you, then it happens to you. They're not going to be mad because you got scraped or you got stuck on the yard. They're going to be upset because they have to do overtime now and have to do paperwork. That's all the cops care about is the paperwork. They ain't tripping. It is what it is. It's prison. That's part of the gang. You know, that's just what it is. So you're going to have to go into prison understanding that if you're a pedophile, you're a weirdo. Bad things are coming. There's nothing good. There's no way to prove it. You know, I knew a guy, man, that got, you know, uh, cleared of bad charges, things like that. But let me tell you, homie, that was well before he went to prison. He had to go through the county jail. They segregated him. Every time that he seen someone, he took flight. He kept fighting the funk. He kept fighting the funk. He did what he had to do because he knew he was innocent. Eventually, he got cleared of the charges. But still, everywhere he goes, he has to justify himself. And there's been plenty of times where he came that close to getting his whole fucking head scraped in. 
Because when you have charges like that, people don't care, man. They see that, they see red. That's it. And it's over. Um, if you're placed on an SOI yard, there are those people there. There are those people that wiggle by. Most of them are going to stay in their cells. They're not going to hit the yards. They're going to sit there with their little crew of weirdos and play Dungeons and Dragons and, and, and fucking look at fucking, you know, Barney or whatever they're going to do. But at the end of the day, people know what's up. And if they come out and they fucking try to act tough or they try to act like everything is good and they're able to do this, they're going to be either extorted, stabbed, or ran off the yard. People get the misconception that these guys on these SNY yards are just letting these chomos walk around freely, man. A lot of these guys are hiding under the radar. The cops don't care. It's chaos. They've lost all element of caring anymore. A lot of the cops look at those SNY yards and everyone's no good anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's just how they look at it. You know, let them run with who they run with. Um, so they might be able to scrape by. A pedophile might be able to get by going to these uh, 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 weaker or softer yards. But if they go to a level four, a level three, any general population yard, they're going to be scraped upon sight. It's what it is. You know, um, I had a homeboy. And this homeboy, man, he had caught bad charges, right? And, you know, I remember everyone in the hood, we had a little junta. Everyone was like, damn, that's the homie, though, man. But there was no justifying it. Hey, it is what it is. The motherfucker caught the case, homes. You know what I mean? He's a weirdo. He did some weird shit. Because automatically, it doesn't matter, homes. No matter what you did, your history, all that. All that goes out the door. If you touch a kid, you touch a kid. Um, that's it. You're bad. Period. In the eyes of the streets and eyes of men. Um, you know, you don't hurt anyone that can't defend themselves. You don't victimize people because you can, homes. That's a weak, that's a weak point of your of your macarisms. That's just weak. Um, you don't do that. Anyways, eventually, you know, he got scraped everywhere he went. And I didn't shed a tear. I wasn't hurt for him because I understood he had that coming. You know, um, I felt fucking uh, uh, disrespected and, and sick to my stomach. The hairs on the back of my neck went up just knowing that he ever was from the neighborhood or he ever was or hung out with us because them tendencies, man, have always been there. They don't just grow. It's not something that just sprouts. I said, it's always been there. You are what you are, period. Um, that's what happens. Now, I've heard in other states, man, um, bad things have happened. You go on YouTube, you can see videos. Um, guys don't last. In the California Department of Corrections, guys will not last. You know, if you're a pedophile, that's just what it is. I hate to sit here and, and be redundant and tell you over and over again what's going to happen to them. But it's just the truth. And the fact is, you know, you can't do that in prison. It's not. It's the number one thing you can't be in there for. Um, and that's just it. You know, that's what happens to pedophiles in prison, man. You might snake by. You might be able to sculever by and slither like the fucking Grinch. And you might be able to to wiggle. Right. But nine times out of ten, you're not. And it's going to be a, a rather vicious demise. You know, I told the story before and I'll reiterate it again. Just a little smidgen, right? Um, I was out of state doing time and there was a guy that was in there um, for some weird shit. And the guy actually escaped and made it out, man. He made it out of prison and, and I don't know who helped him, why they helped him. But, you know, in this day, it was a little different. They had a, It was like big old S and wire that had everybody there. Um, you know, people didn't really play the racial the card too much. It was just motherfuckers was doing what they were doing. This guy was able to escape with the help of a few others, made it out, repeated his offense immediately and came right back to prison. Went and sat on the fucking lawn till they locked his ass back up. When he was asked about it on the tier, he said some rather unsavory things I don't want to repeat. Um, and it blew my mind, the mentality these people have, man. They're sickos. It's just what it is. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people are trying to justify it now in the society we live in that, oh, being a pedophile, man, it's a disease. It's a, it's, it's, you know, it's. Nothing wrong with it. No, there's a lot wrong with it, man. There's a whole lot wrong with it. You go to prison, you're going to find out exactly what's right and what's wrong with it, man. And you, hey, the right the right scale is, is, is like this. It's tipped. It's not going to happen. Anyways, with that being said, that's what happened to pedophiles in prison. Um, if, you're, if you just get beat up and, and, and then the cops come snatch you up and throw you in the oil and then you're able to go to a softer yard where you could live, um, I guess you got lucky, right? Um, but more than likely, you're not going to be that lucky. With that being said, move move with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, I'm just stating facts. I'm just keeping it real. That's what happens. A person asked me the question, what happens to pedophile in prison? They get fucked up, homes. Pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad, right? Um, a lot of them don't go home. It's just what it is, you know? You go in there with them type of crimes, do you deserve to go home? Nah, come on now, man. Let's be real. You know, I don't promote violence, man. But I promote realisms. And that's just as real as it gets. Move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming, man. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. And I'm going to continue to strive and struggle and do what I got to do for me and mine. Bang, bang. The gun.